Welcome back YouTube, it's my channel of an everyday and kind of an ordinary life of an aspect. As you guys are fully aware, as I've mentioned before, that I'm doing right now a series on anxiety, basically, that will hopefully reflect on certain things of what happens in, with people with anxiety, as well as definitions of anxiety, as well as also covering, uh, basically, of the tips and treatments, plans maybe for people who suffer from anxiety, the different categories of anxiety, what it comes under of certain bits and pieces as well as basically just little bits and pieces of how I cope with it even my everyday struggles pretty much as you guys are aware though however I have been suffering from anxiety and you know social anxiety and all these other anxieties that has been listed so far in the channel and as you're aware that basically that sometimes it's not always easy for people that suffers from anxiety it's not just for people like me with on the spectrum that suffers from anxiety it's just ever almost world all over and you question to why people suffer from anxiety a lot and and then sometimes it's like the answer to that is just everyday stress of everyday things that we go through in our lives that, as I said, with this anxiety that comes on us, sort of thing comes on and announced uninvited and pretty much also like occurs obviously in a state of mind of ours, basically in a way of how to put it that, as I said before, that's like you're meeting someone new for the first time or maybe you're going for a job and if you you're seeking out employment for the first time and you're not sure what to do sometimes some people's anxiety levels maybe vary from to person to person as well and also i mentioned about anxiety attacks sort of thing when the key difference about anxiety attacks versus panic attacks which i'm hoping to look for more information about panic attacks since as i said this hopefully will all collab together as the series under anxiety on my channel so in all further ado i better begin with what i'm trying to share with you all today it's normal to feel anxious once in a while each and every one of us obviously in our lives we're likely to feel anxious about something that is happening and that we feel that we're not in control of it even though we feel that we need to be in control of our lives and be it whatever it may be that you know we just tend to want everything the same but we've got to realize sometimes certain things has to be let go of and let the new changes come in and hopefully with these changes despite those circumstances obviously they'll test us and make us grow in the mind spirit and soul sort of thing some suggestions we think though however tend to think that it's going to may tend to end or it's going to end sort of thing and but that ending doesn't have to be the actual ending in its own given right meaning basically what i'm saying here just because we're having a bad day and we're so stressed out and that, and that we think everything's against us or everyone is against us and then you know i feel that sometimes with the band ending here's an example like someone passing away you know you tend to think that's the end of the world but it's not sometimes like when people pass away sometimes they tend to think that basically you gotta you know be up and ready just you know have their stories and legacy and carry it through with whatever they may have shared with you what you should carry on so to speak on this kind of journey of theirs you know to make it livable and stuff you know every journey is different though however i've realized but there's there's an ending as we just need to get through whatever it is that we're going through in life that we're facing or even anxious about. For example, as I said before, it's normal to feel anxious when it comes down to facing any challenges of any given moment, be it a job interview, be it seeking employment, be it like your lost girlfriend or boyfriend, be it the, the changes of the norm of anything or about to sit on an exam and we're getting cold, sweaty hands and all this other you know, some classic signs and symptoms of this anxious, us being anxious overwhelms us, obviously. And it leads to the point of, obviously, an irregular, you know, heartbeat, basically, obviously. And also, as the heart is racing so fast, sometimes, like, and loud, while echoing like a drum in the he inside our head, pounding really hard, that you can't seem to breathe for that moment or second. How we cope with anxiety though, however, is really up to us, like always, everything starts with us, ends with us. When anxiety tend to take over the, f over, and the fears and worries obviously will begin to overwhelm us to a point of that it will might likely to interfere our daily lifestyle and just our everyday living of what we take for granted, getting up in the mornings and man, like so on and so forth. <coughs> you may be suffering from anxiety disorder, yet 
as I said before, I'm no doctor. I'm just a person that's speaking out based on my experiences and encounterships of what I've been through, be it anxiety, be it depression, be it whatever else I've been sharing with you all. So sort of thing, you know, part of me feels that if that happens of these classic signs, what I'm sharing with you, anxiety, depression, and that, seek help. So it doesn't have to be a doctor, psychiatrist, or counselor. It could be a family member or a friend that you can trust and lean on so that you can basically feel more at ease at yourself and not obviously, you know, be stress-free. Um, another one is basically, like I said, based on these concerns and disorders that I've been through or have actually experienced, hopefully that will gain, give you guys a better understanding to who and what I am as a person, how I work and stuff. So everyone fears people being different, as I've noticed many times before, that when something comes up, you know, ooh, you know, they don't want to touch that person because they're might likely to break or whatever label mentality that they have in their mindset of their own to make that judgment call of that particular someone that is different, which is a harsh reality in this world today that many people just don't like people being different. And with some people that are being different, they're probably the braver ones to actually stand out and actually, you know, do something in our lives, be it whatever it may be. Um, another one is also... Though, hopefully this will gain a better insight as you read read this book. If Since, as I see some of these series, as well as all these other ones that I've been bringing up in the book, sort of thing, and hopefully that basically, that as you read this, you can support yourself or others around that are, like you know, like me, you know, or just people in general that you think that are suffering from these conditions and you just hopefully can be their listening ear and be patient with them and be their support network obviously because these days it's a hard one sort of thing especially for people that are trying to fit in just because they're different be it of their different conditions sort of thing and that we tend to either a we copy others around in the social circle that we're in and Sometimes another one is sometimes for us being different, we're competing with everyone, we shouldn't realise we shouldn't have to be competing with everyone, trying to please everyone, just to fit in and stuff, because obviously, as you know, there is such a thing called social anxiety burnout, which I'm hoping to bring later on in the piece of my research about this, which I was hoping to put in my book, but I'll hopefully have a little picture of it somewhere for you guys, as well as all these other pictures that I was hoping to explain more of the diagrams based on the autistic brain and all that that I forgot to mention, so sorry guys, that's been waiting on those ones. You see that there's much, there are a lot of, dis, um, once we, shall we say, once we do get a better understanding to all these disorders and conditions, the better the outcome, obviously, for each of our, one of us to solve it or at least handle it with care or just handle it in general, as well as maybe reducing any of the classic signs and symptoms that persist in any disorder, be it anxiety, be it depression, be it... What's another one? Bipolar, be it... Schizophrenia and the like. Because at the end of the day, we are in control. We are the ones that can gain the control of our lives when we know what we can do for ourselves. Anxiety's definition is, as as I clearly understand it, is defined as a feeling of worry, nervousness or unease about something with an uncertain outcome or even a strong desire or concern to do something or for something to, likely to happen. It's almost like similar to like deja vu or something, you know, in that kind of context how I looked at that definition. Anyway, the types of anxiety. There are six different types of anxiety that are characterised in different groups, however. They range from, as number one, panic disorders and attacks, OCD, specific phobias, general anxiety disorder, or GAD abbreviated down to, and post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD also. Now, with these conditions, however, I'm hoping to just briefly share with you some of the knowledge and the, of the research that I've gathered up, pretty much, what I can gather from all these different anxieties to give you a better, clearer understanding what it could be and hopefully maybe later on in the piece as I see that hopefully with some of this there will be some sort of treatment plan we can put into place or some sort of therapy that may work for you or others but some of it may not work you know for you as it does for me but then you know you never know like I said you know I'm not the and if you really are a bit you know still a bit concerned you can always seek help regardless okay number one of these 
anxiety disorders, or uh, types of anxiety, shall we say, is that panic disorder or panic attack. This form of anxiety that I am aware of, anyone can have them at any moment given of time, you know, in their lives as well, as I said before, many times before, that while we're facing certain challenges in our lives, like I have said, be it interview and the like. This one is characterized or clinically shows signs of repetitive, unexpected panic attacks, as well as just the fear of experiencing another episode of a panic attack. Sometimes, like, as it means that, like, with that, it's almost like it's a ticking time bomb for us when we have some panic attacks. We don't know when it's likely to hit us. It's like, it's like how I call it a ticking time bomb because, you know, you, you never know when it's likely to come on next because, obviously, it's almost like how I look at it also for people that suffer from, like, epilepsy. It's like a ticking time bomb. Count to, you know, 10 slowly or count, to t count from 10 to 1 backwards and that's how usually it happens. Or even sometimes with this panic attack, however, it will basically end up finishing pretty much, you know, fast. Anyway, um, some panic attacks, however, or panic disorders will vary from person to person as I was, as, um, dealing with, when facing and dealing with panic attacks, and sometimes this will come on with a terrible events in the past that has come back to haunt us, or just to them what we've experienced, regardless what it is, like he said, as I said so many times before, the classic term deja vu. But it's usually sometimes some panic attacks may occur in a session, be it like, for example, sometimes with my panic attacks, my panic attacks, you know, it's just if I'm in a nervous situation, be it if I'm like talking to a lot of group of people in public, like in speeches or if I'm performing, that's when it's likely to happen and I'm likely to, you know, feel physically sick and I want to throw up, stage fright sort of thing, and I'm building up the courage now to bring it out to you on the camera here. Um, what I mean also here is, for example, like I said, if having an exam, it may just come up from time to time. With this disorder, this can also be associated with agoraphobia, which is a fear of basically going out to places where, you know, help or escape for that panic attack that will likely to happen will become really difficult for those people that suffer from it, you know, and sometimes, like, with most of these anxieties, many people will tend to just hide away or withdraw out themselves from when it occurs of all of these different anxieties. Anyway, generalized anxiety disorder, or GAD, as I said before, this type of anxiety disorder, number two, this is, is commonly known for people that worries too much or is much known as the classic title, worry warts, which... As I said before, that basically they tend to be anxious or worried about something or even anything for that matter, anything and everything that comes up in an event of a challenge, be it an interview or an exam, as these classic examples for might likely to occur. If we're constantly fearing about certain situations or circumstances that just, just distract us from our everyday life, however, and living with it, and it becomes persistent with that deep feeling of knowing something bad is going to happen when it may not happen or something bad is going to happen and it's likely to happen when we know in our gut, you know, it's usually our gut is telling us something that is right, you know, or something is about to happen. These people will not know why they're doing this in the first place, you know, be it, you know, worrying so much to the point that it's driving them crazy. As many, as I said before, one of my other anxiety series, as many people with anxiety are classified as crazy, lazy, stupid, you know, in the works, which is, which is sad really, but it, it's just how it is in life in general. OCD or number three, or obsessive compulsive disorder. This is a form of anxiety disorder that is characterized by any unwanted thoughts or behavioral patterns that is clinically shown or that may be or can be impossible to stop even control within ourselves. This could show as a recurring worry also that you've forgotten, for example, locking the door checking in the oven all the time to check if you've, you know, switched it off, checking the power supply if you're saving power, locking the key in your car, you know, double checking, you know, um, this sort of disorder can lead, then sometimes lead to, you may be going to hurt someone that you love and care about, sort of thing, and you don't mean to, or you not know how to control that thought pattern that is coming into your mindset, that, you know, even if you do love them or you hate them, whatever, how this chemical brain of ours work, sort of thing, that you may follow through that thought pattern, you may not, but then again, it's like I said, that, that deep thinking, if we did, is based on that word depression sometimes too. Um, another one is basically also though, if uh, is, it could lead you to maybe suffering from 
controllable compulsions, be it like you're washing your hands over and over again, or another classic example, picking at your skin all the time nervously until it bleeds or until you, you get to a certain skin level of your skin sort of thing. And you can almost, I don't know, here's a, I'm imagining this, you could almost see bone if you're that, you know, obsessive about it. Number four, phobia. This is a, like, unrealistic or is it exaggerated sort of fear of a specific object or some sort of activity or even just a situation in reality that presents little or no danger at all to us. So common phobias such as like with certain animals, rats, spiders, snakes, or even just events like flying, heights, water, you know, fear of drowning, confined spaces. Another one is sometimes people, some people may go to the length, as I said before, to the to avoid that phobia and just isolate, or just to try and isolate themselves. When when that isolation occurs, obviously, for too long, that's when people will get so depressed and whatnot. Social anxiety disorder is number five. This one can be happening so quick and sudden when we try our best to socialize or to fit in, or even sometimes this will occur when socializing with others that will have the dreaded fear of being judged, laughed at, or being seen negatively by others, pretty much of how maybe we look sometimes. I know that some people can be so insecure about their looks. I was one of them once upon a time. I'm not trying my hardest now just to, you know, forget about my looks and just get on with it. You know, better if I've got a bad hair day, wearing trackers, you know, suit, track suit on, messy hair, be it whatever. Even though, yes, okay, sometimes images everything for some people, you know, but looks can be deceiving how I look at it as well. But you got to look at the person as well as not just the um, you know actual looks, but the personality. But I think I've already shared about looks versus personality. I'm not sure, but give me a heads up later on if you want to, to see if I have or not. Um, anyway, is this also is quite common, common more I so I think in the majority of it for females, basically on the social anxiety disorder. Or another one is like I'm not. A classic example for this is that it's just a fear of being humiliated by others, be it regardless how maybe, you know, people might think about us or how, I don't know, how we speak or how we act or talk or whatever. I, I'm still to this day trying to learn, you know, forget what other people might think about me, you know, regardless, in the back of my mind, you know, doing the best I can to my ability for what I feel is right for me, even though I'm trying to now realise that I can't always please everyone. Once upon a time, this was no one as pretty much extreme shyness for people like me with AS being an introvert for, is a real classic example on the social anxiety disorder, however, now and again. Because obviously with those type people that are extremely shy, they just don't want to socialise or they do, but they'll struggle with, you know, connecting with people in a way maybe based on their conditions or it's just life in general, you know, um, but... Be in mind, this is just going to be an advice here before I continue on my last one of this is that um, don't take an offence pretty much if they just don't want to socialise you one on one or as in a group because, you know, everyone's different obviously. Can't force people to socialise if they, they're in their own, we're on, our, we're on ourselves in a way of, you know, being who we are and what we are, you know, be it if we want to be in a group, be it if we want to be on our own, you know, it's okay to be alone sometimes, I, I, realize, I realize, you know, it's okay to be alone sometimes because when we're alone, obviously it gives us time to grow and time to think and reflect on our day maybe or just a time to reflect on what could be done better if we did something that wasn't guaranteed to be the right, you know, thing in the right given moment. Um, but also... And saying that, just respect their well wishes of what they're saying. Be understanding and pathetic enough for these people to respect that. Because, you know, in all fairness, like, I've noticed that since I've been opening up about my condition, some people just take it a, take it a bit over the top, I reckon, with how it is. And I, like I said, it's the lack of knowledge and understanding based underneath the surface of my AS and all these other conditions and disorders I suffer from. But... After all, I know that mask of it all. I'm still a human being. Put it that way. Um, anyway, in the most severe cases, however, people who suffer from this disorder pretty much will tend to avoid, again, socialising altogether and then isolate themselves just to be on their own. The last one, basically, is post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD. 
this disorder can also happen to anyone at any given moment of time in their life of something that has happened to them in the aftermath of something that was so traumatic and life-threatening of some events. Be it like people, be it nice classic one, like our grandfathers, great-great-grandfathers and that when they were in war, basically, maybe people shooting e each other. Be it like if you're in a police force and you're dealing something real sinister, you know, and you get caught up in the middle of it. Um, or just physical violence altogether, you know, of some sort. Sometimes with this disorder, however, this one will lead up to the panic attack so quick and sudden. As I said before, with some some panic attack disorders, or shall we say, this anxi some anxiety disorders do lead up to the panic attack stages. Um, symptoms with this, though, are flashbacks, nightmares about what has happened in the past, withdrawal from others, heavy breathing, heart racing, dizziness, and most importantly, like, they're likely to avoid situations that might remind them of that event that they went through in the past, be it, like, example, the classic one, the wars. Um, again, what advice I'll give you all is just to be there for them, never force that person, if they didn't wish to socialise with you in the group, don't all obviously take offence and just be understanding and dependent enough and respect their wishes to what they may want out of you, be it if they want to socialise with you at that given moment of time or not, you know. But sometimes you've got to treat with care with this, obviously, when it comes down to it, when it, when, it, when you need to, sort of thing. So, basically, this ends my series, well, not the series, but end of this blog of, basically, anxiety, can you help me? Um, please like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching and your support. I'm hoping, like I said, to collaborate as much as I can as a series on these anxiety and get on to the next topics, which I'm hoping soon that someone still wants waiting on me about based on the self-confidence, which it will be coming up, I promise. Just please hold on to seats, even though it's been a while since I've been presenting or shall I say been sharing you my journey so far, even though sometimes we all do deserve a break here and there. Even though at the moment, yes, things are getting hicked up for me at the moment, but I'm trying to take it all on, all on board, come and just do what I feel is right for myself. So, and all for the do, like I said, like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, you know, you know the drill. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you all soon.